This week, let's talk about the Ram RHO exhaust note. Let's also talk about the Ram heavy duty grill. It's been a topic of conversation this week online. I also have details for you on the ports of duty changes. And then Toyota has announced a fix for the airbag issue for 145,000 Lexus TX and Toyota Grand Highlanders to fix an airbag issue with the window down. It's a really interesting recall. Hey, it's Tim, pickup truck plus as we talk. Early morning here outside of Dallas, heading home today, but I want to get this truck news recap out too. It's quick as I could. It's been a busy week. I'm off a day again. I usually do these on Fridays. Sorry, it's Saturday. But the week was really busy here in Texas doing State Fair Texas and Texas Auto Rider Association, which I'm a member of. We do a truck rodeo. They brought several trucks out. Unfortunately, it's just Ram and Toyota this year had trucks there. So get ready. You'll see a lot of Toyota and Larks and Ram content. But one of the cool things happened this week was that, boom, Jill and I won an award. Yep, we won first place in the video category for what's called Excellence in Craft Competition. It's really cool to be honored by your colleagues to look at your work and said, you know what? This is the best. I've been in this competition for years. Never won first place. So that was really cool this week. Also really cool this week was getting in to the RHO. And you may have seen it on the YouTube channel. I had a What a Ram Truck is the title on the, on the thumbnail. And I talked about looking around the Ram RHO. I had never actually been in it. Yeah, never have been in it. So I'm excited to, to have a chance to consider around. Uh, Brent Combs was helpful, and he works with Ram, and helpful showed me some features, some things I didn't know, like it's full-time four-wheel drive. I missed that piece of the press release because, you you know, some details just don't hit, you remember. So it was cool to see that and uh, see that truck and see the truck I'm buying. Um, that truck there was like 87000 I'm not spending anywhere near that <laughs> for the RHO I'm buying. But that's number one question came up online. Uh, the one I'm getting is going to be like 72 or so forth. So I, I can't remember the exact number. I need to get all the details figured out when I go to buy it, hopefully later on this month. One of the issues that video people pointed out, they're like, would have been nice to hear the exhaust note. Yeah, it would have been nice to hear the exhaust note. I agree. I wanted the exhaust note too. I asked a couple different times. The trucks we were in were demo units. They were not able to be started for whatever reason. They were uh, they put them in place, hooked them up to be de demo units. They turned off the ignitions and such. So they're getting prepped for the public days. And so I didn't get all the access I really wanted as far as the exhaust note. There was a spot where they're doing some driving around, some uh, ride-alongs. And while I was there, they were still trying to get that dry. They put down the uh, quick dry stuff they use at the ball fields and were making laps. I thought it was really going to be really unfair to share the exhaust note in RHO driving 20 miles an hour and not really revving it up. Uh, Ram did tell me that the uh, difference between the tungsten and the RHO exhaust note, the same high output engines, is massive. They said the RHO sounds a lot better than tungsten does. Different customer, they have the chain and different uh, exhaust needs. Exhaust sound needs. <laughs> better way to say that. So uh, expect more details on that coming um, another month or so. I'll have some exhaust note for you on that. So I just want to address that issue as well. Another issue that popped up online was this guy. Sorry for listening to the podcast. But uh, we have the new Ram Heavy Duty Grill. And people are like, I think the drive had a story. It's like, grillionaire and somebody else was like, what the heck, Ram? What are you guys doing? And the issue here is the Ram Heavy Duty Rebel has some horizontal lines in a grill. And then in the corners, like next to the lights, they have a few sections of vertical. And so it's horizontal and vertical. And it just stands out to people. And they're like, what the heck's going on with this? Well, I talked to some people at Ram about this at the event. And I was like, do you guys hear about this controversy? And they're like, why is there a controversy? We did this in 21 with the Ram Heavy Duty Power Wagon Edition. That had a very vertical grill too. We've done these different types of grills. First time we're um, in putting vertical and maybe horizontal together, but the 75th anniversary of the Power Wagon had a very similar grill to the Heavy Duty grill. So um, they're just, they're a little bit like shocked. And, I, and, and my attitude is I wanna see it in person before I kind of lay down judgment. I want to understand what they're going with design needs for. And yeah, it may be look worse in person or may look better. There's oftentimes with trucks that looks worse in a photo. You get in person, you're like, oh, oh, that's different. For example, Cybertruck looks a lot different in person than it does in photos. Still looks terrible, but that's okay. Uh, we also have details for you on the Ford Super Duty. There's a variety of changes and uh, there's more changes than meets the eye. There were some differences in the press release when I published this um, story. They sent a press release out, then their press release had more details for it in the Ford site. So trying to get information together was kind of frustrating in this. So basically what you have is you have a new Platinum Plus edition, which is the photo you see on the screen. And uh, it's just a higher level end of a Ford Super Duty. So more Chrome, which by the way, fun fact, I learned this this weekend, Chrome is uh, bad for the environment. I had never known that. 
that, well, I guess this week, but yeah, there's a couple of brands were stating Chrome is back to the environment, so getting rid of Chrome. That's a, that's a new one. I hadn't heard that one before. Um, I think it's probably the chroming process, probably the chemicals and things. But so we have more chrome in the front. We have 22-inch wheels. We have more plus interior. What's interesting is that the Ford Super Duty Platinum Plus, if you go ahead and get that edition, is $6,500 more for the 250 350 450 doesn't get it, which I think is interesting. And you actually get a concierge um service as well that they, they get you somebody and you can walk through the features you have one-on-one -on -one texting with with a product support person more details than i had in the uh in the video unfortunately i learned afterwards but what i find really fascinating about the whole deal is that the f-150 platinum plus is eleven thousand dollar package this is sixty five hundred dollar package and so weird it's just weird the way they're doing these things and i don't have the ability to build in price at the moment to figure out all the features you can get but my guess is if you do an F-350 diesel, dually, platinum plus, you might take on a mortgage instead of a car payment. <laughs> it's it's going to be a really expensive rig. And, you know, people are going to buy these, especially ranchers and farmers and, and big operations, for the tax write-off. That's what's going to come out with that. So I can see the selling because of those issues with the tax write-offs. But, uh, yeah, it's it's quite the interesting package. And no detail, no changes for the um, for the powertrain. This is just really all about the uh, luxury package. There's up new upfitter options for people doing upfits, and the Platinum has a slight changes to the overall styling. So that's your differences for the 2025 model year Force of Beauty. Now, other things I talked about was the Lexus TX and Toyota Grand Highlander airbag malfunction. This was a weird one. You may remember back in uh, June, I did a video on this, and this was during the, well, tumultuous summer of Toyota. Tumultuous. For much of this, how do you say that? It was a terrible summer for t t Toyota. I shouldn't use big words, Tim. Too early for that. But they had a Grand Highlander recall, Lexus TX recall, Toyota Tundra recall. Tacoma had a, a what was a couple weeks ago had the uh, uh, service bulletin to fix transmission issues if they do come up. And so this airbag recall is interesting because the idea here was when you are driving with the window down, the airbag would malfunction. But what really happened here is that the airbag didn't employ as intended. And so they redesigned the curtain shield airbags on the driver and passenger side of both the Lexus TX and Toyota Grand Highlander. Apparently when the driver's side window was down, the curtain shielded airbag failed to say, stay inside the cabin, which meant it was not in compliance with federal safety standards. So there's a variety of federal safety standards that for airbags and everything, lots of stuff in the vehicle, more than you think of. And apparently the drivers, when, when the window was down, the airbag would fly out if it got deployed. So they redesigned the anchors and they'll anchor that in place better when the window is down. So it's just kind of a crazy um, recall fix, modifying the airbags anchoring system. So have some sort of fix in dealership, to replace some parts or whatever on the window and keep that airbag in place when it deploys. So a whole lot of do about nothing or a major issue. Like I, I was thinking about this, I was driving around uh, Texas this week and uh, thinking about how many times in the last, I don't know, five years I've driven around my window down. It's not very often anymore. The AC in the cabin's nice. The heat's nice uh, in the wintertime. But um, AC in the cabin's nice. I like this quiet cabin with the nicer windows and design we have these days. So I don't really drive my windows down very often. But hmm, if you do, this is what you need. Put a comment down below. Do you drive with the windows open? That's an interesting one. Other details. Uh, Ineos was there at the truck rodeo. I was at, they had the Quartermaster truck and the Grenadier. These are two like high-end luxury not luxury, <laughs> high-end customer trucks. They're, they're interesting rigs, uh, pretty bare bones, solid axles. They have a recirculating ball steering, which is, takes a little bit to get used to, uh, BMW engines. And basically, they, they use a variety of parts, and they're being delayed because the seat maker Recario is currently going through bankruptcy. So if you're looking for an Inuus and you want that cool thing that's you know a little unique, you'll be waiting for a little while. So go to the to YouTube channel. We have what happened this week on YouTube and the YouTube world. Uh, we have the details for the Jeep, great Jeep Gladiator. Details were coming up. I have a Lexus GX 550 Overtrail Plus towing video. It's interesting. I had the same issues I had with the Land Cruiser and with the um, GX about hookups. And now we're questioning trailers, questioning stuff. I've towed with that trailer quite a bit. I, it's just it's crazy. I'm not sure what's going on with that. And then we have uh, Lucifer Duty Platinum. I have details for you there. I reviewed a, a, a portable air compressor. This thing is actually pretty badass. I, have, I don't review parts and gear that often. Maybe I should. 
but that was pretty badass. And then we had the Ram truck um, that I talked about earlier as far as the overall drive with that. So I also have details coming for you later on this week. Uh, Toyota has finally announced the remote Wi-Fi camera setup for the Tacoma, Tundra, and Sequoia. That's a re- they have three, on, on some of those trucks, they have three like shark fins. And one shark fin controls the Wi-Fi camera. And I have details for you that. I also had the first look at the Sequoia 1794 edition. Why it took so long for that to come out is bizarre to me. But yeah, we have the details for that. And then I actually have um, just a variety of of short videos I'm putting on some TikTok. I'm doing some reels over here. Massage seats for the the Tundra and Sequoia. I have a video on that. Just a variety of small details I got through you for this week. So that's what I have for you this week on this truck news recap. Put comments below. What do you guys think? Is the exhaust note something exciting for? Do you drive the windows down? And what about that Ram grill? Hmm. Detail. Interesting. 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 I'm going to go get another cup of coffee because clearly I need it. Maybe you do too. If you want to check for more videos, check them out over here. Website down below as well. PickupTruckTalk.com. Lots of details in the forum. We're having ongoing conversations over there. It's really good stuff. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.